Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about ketones and ketoacidosis, uh, the difference between the two, and uh, the cyclic ketogenic diets and things of that nature. Burning body fat. When we start to burn body fat, um, the number one way to do it is to simply cut your sugar and carbs out of your diet. If you cut your sugar and carbs out of your diet, your body has now got no choice but to burn body fat. So how does this whole process work? Well, you cut your sugar and your carbs out of your diet and it takes about three, four days for your body to realize, okay, we don't have any sugar, I better start burning fat instead. In fact, technically the process happens straight away, but in order for it to come full effect, it takes around about three, four days. So after this three, four day period, what happens is that you have two different types of fat cells in your body. Glycerol, which is um, water soluble, means that it's free floating in your bloodstream, it can be used as fuel instantly, and your fat lipids. So fat lipids are not water soluble, uh, they need to be attached to a protein to be transported through your blood system. It now goes to your liver. Your liver now converts it into ketones. So ketones are now your body's fuel source. They're not your body's preferred fuel source, but it is a very efficient fuel source and it is nothing harmful for your system. The human body has been using this ketone period uh, since the Paleolithic times uh, of hunters and gatherers, where we went through times where we never had uh, sugar available. In fact, most of the time there were seeds, grains, nuts, meat, uh, veggies are low in sugar, not as much fruit as what people would expect. It's only recently that we've had a massive amount of sugar put in our diets in modern times that our bodies are not adapted to uh, deal with it very efficiently and body fat levels and obesity have skyrocketed through the roof. So the other time that we naturally go through this whole process is when we sleep at night. Every single night when we sleep at night your sugar levels bottom out and when your sugar levels bottom out our body's got no choice but to start to produce ketones to survive. So it is a very natural uh, process to go through. Our bodies are very well equipped at going through it. When your body goes through this ketones there are, your body produces uh, three different types. So out of the three different types of ketones produced, two are used for fuel uh, by your brain and your heart. After about three, four days, your heart actually gets about 25% of its fuel from these ketones. Uh, the third type of ketone is a byproduct, and your body simply urinates it out of your system. Um, it's not, like I mentioned before, it's not dangerous. So the way the whole process goes is that your fat cells, so just a quick recap, your fat cells get tr transported with a protein to your liver. Your liver breaks down into ketones, and then your body uses the ketones as a fuel source. Now you are born and die with the same amount of fat cells in your system, it's not until you go through massive obesity that your body actually can produce more fat cells, uh, but for most of us uh, that stage is highly unlikely. So what happens is that when your body breaks down your fat cells into ketones, those fat cells simply shrink. So that's all the basic process that happens. Now when going into ketone diets, there are actually three different types of ketone diets. The first one is where you simply minimize your carbohydrate levels to 30 grams a day maximum. Now when this is done, there's absolutely no sugar, no carbohydrates in the system. Your body's got no choice but to break down fats into ketones and your body's fat cells shrink. The other method is, and sorry, that method is designed not for people who are exercising. All right, so it's not for people who are exercising. Um, in all these diets to keep in mind that your protein levels need to be very, very high to maintain muscularity. Um, you actually need about double your weight in grams of protein per day. So if you weigh 50 kilos, you need 100 grams. If you weigh 70 kilos, you need 140 grams. If you weigh 90 kilos, you need 180 grams. Um, so that's the way the whole process works. So you need to have a lot of protein in your system. Now the second method is designed for people who are exercising on a regular basis. So in this case you want to minimize your carbohydrate levels again to about 30 grams a day but you can have 30 grams of carbohydrate 30 to 60 minutes before you work out. Now this carbohydrate intake doesn't count because you'll simply burn it up throughout your workout. 
Muscle tissue's number one fuel source is stored muscle glycogen or glucose, so or sugar in your blood. So you want to have sugar in your blood in order to be strong. If you're on this ketone diet and you do not have carbs pre-workout, you will lose around about 10 to 20 percent strength. So that's a lot of strength going out the door that you definitely want to preserve if you're exercising on a regular basis. The third type is the most complex of the three. It's where you go through a cyclic process. So this is what we call a cyclic ketogenic diet where you cut your carbs and minimize your carbs again to 30 grams maximum in the day. Um, and then one to two times a week, depending on your body type. So if you're a mesomorph or endomorph, um, you want to minimize your carbohydrate intake to um, you know, uh, one day um, in the week, but you can have a high carb day in a week. Um, the second uh, body type, your ectomorphs, uh, tall, lean, athletic body types, can store your carbs more efficiently without gaining fat. So you want to have about two days of high carb days a week. Um, those carbohydrates can't just be raw sugar, etc. It's good to have, um, most people will have a low GI diet. Uh, at Body Peaks, myself, I'd suggest having a low glycemic load diet. So look at having low GL foods. Um, these are type of foods that are slowly released into your system and not in massive quantities. So they still have a low quantity of sugar being released in your system. But you can have that spaced out more evenly um, throughout your day. So they're not only releasing your system slowly, but there's a low quantity. But So you can have more food throughout the day. Um, and this is specifically designed uh, for bodybuilders. So basically what we're doing is we're cutting your carbs throughout the week uh, so your body's got no choice but to burn fat but you're not losing muscularity because you've got two, low car two high carb loading days uh, that refill your cells and give yourself that volume uh, back again. So that's a little recap on, the, on, on ketosis. Oh, sorry, the um, ketoacidosis. Uh, ketoacidosis is not to do with ketones. This is um, dangerous. So this is um, the result of being type 1 diabetic. Uh, type 1 diabetic is where your body cannot produce insulin. You have to inject it manually. Um, so your sugar levels raise so high in your blood um, that it can't be used as fuel, it can't get it into your cells. Uh, so now your body is now forced to produce ketones in the presence of the acid, of the sugar. So basically what happens is, this is why it's called ketoacidosis. And this is a very um, dangerous, it's very deadly, um, can produce migraines and headaches and, and, and uh, in some very rare cases, death. So that's ketoacidosis. So when people will say, hey, you're on a ketone diet, oh, that's really dangerous, oh, it's really bad for your system. They're simply getting mixed up with ketoacidosis. So um, ketones are healthy, uh, keto uh, diets are very healthy. Um, ketoacidosis is not very healthy. And that's a quick rundown from Body Peaks. I'll talk to you next time.